And now let's shift our focus to Turkey. On Wednesday night, just as we were about to wrap the show, the president of Turkey made an admission. An admission that may be a tad bit too late. Speaking in Kaharaman Maris, the worst hit city in this tragedy, Erdogan acknowledged that there were shortcomings in Turkey's response to the earthquake. He said that there were indeed some problems in the first place, that the people faced some difficulties. But things are slowly getting better, he says. On the first day, of course, there were some difficulties. But then on the second day and today, the situation was under control. And from now on, our work on the debris is continuing. But on the other hand, our Ministry of Environment and Urbanization will hopefully start the clean-up. We had some problems in some places. In the first stage, we had problems on the roads. But we're more comfortable today. We will be more comfortable tomorrow. I believe that we will be more and more comfortable. There are some minor problems regarding fuel and so on. We are overcoming them one by one. So what exactly was he talking about? From where we see it, Erdogan was referring to the lapses in relief work. Yes, they were indeed slower than expected. But what these tremors also exposed is the state of infrastructure in Turkey. Remember, we reported on this in detail two days back. And two days on, the anger over building standards, poor building standards, is only growing. And we don't blame the people. Just look at the numbers. The tremors destroyed a total of 6,444 buildings. And this is just the official figure. We don't know how many buildings and houses are still unaccounted for. Whatever may be the final number, the fact of the matter is that these buildings were never meant to survive these tremors in the first place. Because they were never built up to modern construction standards. They were built using subpar materials, I repeat, subpar materials and long discredited techniques. I'm not saying this, Turkey's own civil engineers are, like this one. Sinan Turkan, the president of Turkey's Earthquake Retrofit Association, this is what he had to say, he had to say about the state of the buildings. I'm quoting, on paper, Turkey's seismic design code is up to global standards. It is actually better than most. In practice, however, the situation is very different. It saddens me deeply as an engineer. If we managed to get everyone on board, we could have either reinforced or rebuilt all defective buildings in the past 20 years. We could have saved at least 5,000 of the buildings that we lost on Monday from complete destruction. We could have saved many, many lives. What do such statements tell you? That this was not just a natural tragedy, it was also a man-made disaster. A disaster that could have been avoided, should have been avoided. Had Turkish authorities done their job well? And it's not like they weren't warned. There are countless reports suggesting that experts had on several occasions raised alarm over the abysmal state of the country's infrastructure. One such expert was Okan Thuyuz, a geological engineer from the Istanbul Technical University. And this is what he told the Turkish media recently. I'm quoting again. For years we held conferences, wrote reports and sent them to local authorities. We told them big earthquakes will inevitably hit cities like Hathe and Gaziantep again. We explained to them however strong no building built directly on a fault line can survive an earthquake, it would be torn apart. We said we should create accurate fault line maps for the entire country and transform areas directly on active fault lines into green zones with construction bans. Listen to this. He says that no one listened. This was a clear warning. Why? Why were these warnings ignored time and again? Why did Turkey do nothing about them? And above everything else, was the Turkish president who recently went on a spree of converting museums into mosques not aware about the deplorable state of infrastructure in his own country? I highly doubt it. Here's why. 
In 2011, when a deadly earthquake killed hundreds in, Tur in Turkey, Erdogan blamed poor construction for the death toll. He said, Municipalities, constructors and supervisors should now see that their negligence amounts to murder. That's Erdogan. And this is Erdogan 10 years back. But has anything changed in these 10 years? If we speak of infrastructure, no. If we speak of Erdogan's response, yes, it has changed, certainly. While the president did acknowledge shortcomings, he was quick to turn the gun towards Turkey's perceived enemies. He said these enemies are waging a viciously negative campaign, a campaign to malign the country's image. Listen in. This period is the period of unity. It is the time of solidarity. In such a period, I do not digest viciously negative campaigns conducted in the name of mere political interests. If I were not responsible for my position, I would not be speaking like that today. I would be speaking quite differently. Guess what? The people of Turkey are not buying Erdogan's words. They're telling the story for what it is, a failure of Turkey's leadership. They say not only have they lost their homes, but also the hope that they will be able to rebuild. Well, we certainly hope the Turkish president is listening to this. There is no professional team. There is no team to remove the bodies or the survivors still under the rubble. The building you see here is lying on its side and we have cleaned almost the entire entrance with our own hands. And now, even though it's the fourth day, no one has come to help. There isn't any working order. There is work, but no order. There is no order regarding the shelter either. I have to go and stay in a remote part of Adiyama. We as civilians support these people, but I'm not a crane. I cannot lift these concrete blocks. I'm a mother. My heart can only bear so much pain. But no one is listening. Where is the army? Where is the state? Where is the unity? Where is the solidarity? These accounts are truly distressing. Our thoughts go out to these people. We hope they're able to find the strength to recover and rebuild, although given the way their government is responding, we doubt if the road to recovery will be an easy one, sadly. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.